For the better part of a century, civil rights activist Merle Evers Williams has made a home in the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains. I still call Claremont home. And it probably will be my home until I take my last breath. This quiet college community served as the starting point for Evers Williams' trailblazing career. I never would have thought that little Merle Louise Beasley skinny little kid, undernourished, would have ever found herself in the positions that I have. Evers Williams was born in Mississippi in 1933, growing up under the state-sanctioned racism of the Jim Crow laws in the South. You know, so much of my life has been filled with anger and determination to prove to those who felt I was nothing but trash because of color my skin. At 18 years old, she met and married Medgar Evers. Together they fought for racial equality in a deeply unjust society, organizing protests, rallying voter registration drives, and advocating for the desegregation of schools. I think that that bravery, you might call it foolish, came one from Medgar of knowing him, of loving him, of seeing what he was putting up with and what he was willing to give. They opened up the first NAACP office in the state of Mississippi, a move that made them targets of white domestic terrorism. I remember the many threats that we received. It reached a point where I almost knew which phone phone call was going to be a threat. In 1963, there was a firebombing at her house. Shortly after, her husband was assassinated by a white supremacist in their driveway. The death of Medgar Evers was mourned nationwide. He was revered as a martyr for the civil rights cause. I knew that I no longer wished to live in the state of Mississippi and rear our children there. Just reviewing conversations that Matthew and I had, I recall that he said, Merle, if we ever leave Mississippi, we're going to California. In 1964, Evers Williams left everything she knew behind, but her drive to break barriers and create lasting change only grew stronger. She headed west and enrolled in Pomona College. Pomona stood out. <laughs> it's almost like being, you see the cartoons where an arrow strikes the heart and you know it's right. She graduated with a degree in sociology in 1968. And it was my being here at Pomona with the instructors here and the other people who did not smother me. They gave me space, but they surrounded me by love, understanding, and saying, yes, you can. Two years out of college, Evers Williams was again making political waves. Politics has always fascinated me. And the fact that in my native state of Mississippi, people of my color, let alone run for office, we couldn't vote. She ran for Congress in the 24th District of California in the 70s, campaigning door to door. But some of the bigotry and sexism she faced in the South followed her to California. The biggest challenge was my color and the fact that I was female. Females of any color were not warmly accepted into the political battlefield, if I can put it that way. There was a thought that was promoted during that time, quote, you are only a woman. You do not belong in a tough political fight such as what you will have. Perhaps I should not say this on camera, but I'm gonna do it. 
It made me want to kick ass. Evers Williams did not win her political races, but she continued to break through ceilings. She took prominent positions in the corporate world. She remarried to civil rights and union activist Walter Williams. Her career moved into civil service, eventually being named the first black woman to serve as a commissioner of the Board of Public Works for the city of Los Angeles. All the while, she never stopped fighting to seek justice for Medgar Evers' murder, and finally finding it when his killer was retried and sentenced, 30 years after Medgar's death. You know, I'm not sure when that verdict came in what it meant, except that I was free. The accomplishments of Merle Evers Williams are hard to overstate. She became the chairwoman of the NAACP. She's been honored with numerous national awards. Her life has been immortalized on the big screen in multiple films. I was on the witness stand and I watched as the former governor of this state shook hands with the man who murdered my husband. And like civil rights leaders before her, Evers Williams' journey even took her to the steps of the nation's capital. America, we are here. Evers Williams was the first woman and first non-member of the clergy to give the invocation at a presidential inauguration as the nation's first black president entered his second term in office. 150 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, and 50 years after the March on Washington, we celebrate the spirit of our ancestors. Her moving speech was televised across the globe in 2013. We send a message to the world that we are strong, fierce in our strength, and ever vigilant in our pursuit of freedom. Merle Evers Williams has overcome unbearable tragedy, has stood in the face of vile racism, and continued to fight when all odds were against her. Still, optimism remains. You know, if I have to say anything to you, it's that I am so blessed. She resisted a comfortable life, and it came at a great personal cost. Her fight, her persistence and her sacrifice forced a nation of liberty and justice for all to reflect on its values. The pain and the scars that come from being my color and living in a segregated society is painful. It's something you don't forget It's something that you gain strength from, not only to survive, but to thrive. It is something that is instilled in you where you want to help people, regardless of the color of skin, to understand each other, to realize that we are all human beings. We are different. But we are human beings.